Hi everyone! Hello. It's episode five. Hi. I can hardly believe it. That means that we've been at this for ten weeks. Time is flying. Yeah. But yeah. so just as an introduction, I'm Kim and this is Jennifer. And we're the sisters who own Fleece and Harmony Woolen Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. If you're new to our podcast, welcome to you. And if you're joining us again, we're really happy to have you back. Yeah. yeah. So um we're gonna do uh we've got quite quite a packed episode today so, yeah. yeah they always it seems like all the ideas always come and we're we think we've got it all sorted out and then we think of five more things that we have to add but we'll try to keep it as tight as possible and just to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing so uh, we're going to show you our finished objects obviously what we've been knitting on um, we are going to do some works in progress uh, today, but that's going to be related to some other other things that we're doing as well. So we'll, that will be a little bit longer segment than usual. We have two special guests, <laughs> Paige and Mabel, who you'll meet later. And we have a new yarn, a new pattern, new and new sock colors. So that's going to be the, uh, the episode today. And we'll do our regular segment of Welcome to Our World as well. And today we're going to show um, the picking and de-herring of the wool. So we're almost finished the prep work. <laughs> it's a long process. Yeah. Yeah. It's surprisingly long. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do though today is finished objects. So I don't have one. We don't have any. We don't have any. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm wearing my Waiting for Rain, which you saw last week, but uh, it was hard to get a really good look at it the way we had the camera set up. And uh, yeah, I've taken some better pictures and things of it now. So just to show the lace off a little bit better. So that's my same mm -hmm. FO. Right. And then you're wearing your car bath. Yes, which yeah. I wore, I think, was it in the first episode? No, I don't know. Oh, did you? Second. I don't think if you wore it. Oh, no, I have worn it in one episode. Oh, <laughs> but today is actually the exact day I had in mind for when I was knitting this car bath oh. because it's super cozy and it's minus 16 degrees Celsius outside today and there's a little bit of a breeze. So uh, this is exactly the right sweater to have on today. Yeah, so it looks really nice and soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I is. have no sleeves on, but it's, no. <laughs> it's okay. I'm warm in here. And you're wearing a beautiful shawl pin yes the brooch made by our mum yeah so these are on our website for sale yeah. and it's a mix of swarovski crystals and pearls and some flower beads and things if you haven't seen them already we did mention them in an earlier episode yeah. as well i actually do have one fo but it's related to a new pattern that we are right. launching today right. so that's kind of coming up later right yeah right so in case you thought we took two weeks off oh my gosh no no we've been knitting <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay so then i think we should just start with the works in progress right away okay fun okay go ahead well, okay i'll go ahead <laughs> okay so works in progress so i have two and the first one i will talk about is my socks okay which are in my lovely um Hannah Lisa Haffer Camp project bag, which we also sell on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and they're really lovely bags. And if you've been watching Hannah Lisa and thinking, I cannot afford to bring that in from Germany, we've done that for you. So you might want to check them out. It's a really good opportunity to have somebody else pay all the import charges um, to get these in from Berlin. And I, I love them and it matches. Yeah, yeah, of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have them in the medium and large size. So these are my both sides now and then socks. Um, that was the Kate Atherley pattern that we launched, helped launch last week that Kate did using our new sock yarn. And I've actually ripped this out once already because they were a tiny bit tight. So the thing I love about Kate when she designs socks and just her general sock philosophy is that she recognizes that not everybody's foot is the same. So there are several sizes available in the pattern and I did want it very tight because as you may have heard before, I can't stand when socks go down inside my rubber boot. Oh, it's very annoying. Yeah, and you've got basically poop and mud around the bottom of your coveralls oh, and then you're okay. out in the freezing cold right. in a bare foot and to pull your bare foot through all that, anyway, yeah. it's an ordeal. Yeah. No slouching no socks allowed. Um, so I did, and really, you know, you have to gauge for something like this in the round, like swatch in the round. And for the amount of knitting it was, you might as well just start the sock, hope to get lucky. And if not, then that was your first swatch. Right. So that's kind of what I did. So I ended up going to the exact needle size recommended in the pattern. I didn't need to go down a needle size in this case, which I normally do because I knit loose, but in the round, it seemed to work out okay. And these fit perfectly. 
and I'm knitting them inside out because the pattern is actually reverse stockinette with this lovely ribbed detail. So I'm getting pretty close to being able to turn the heel or start the heel flap, which is what I consider the fun part, mm -hmm. even though that's what most people hate about yeah. socks. Uh -huh. It's exciting. It's, it's, it's kind of strange. It's so funny. There's two, there's sock knitters and then there's people that knit garments or whatever. And it's so funny because people will make beautiful, beautiful sweaters complex patterns and think they can't knit socks and then people who knit socks think they can't knit sweaters I, I don't I don't know that. you can do it all yeah you can do it all for sure <laughs> so I'm really having fun and it's knitting up pretty quickly even though this is the second time I've done it uh, and I'm not sure at which point we turn it over and start working on the right side with the reverse stockinette exposed but I, I don't read patterns through before I start them bad girl it's just one of those yeah. things well according to Kate you shouldn't have to oh the pattern should be written <laughs> well enough that that's not totally necessary, although it is recommended. Yeah. So that's my uh, both sides now and then socks. And I think I might want to knit these in every color Yeah. that we make. I'm sure you will. Yeah, yeah. in this yarn. Because, I, I mean, they're custom, custom socks, yeah. just like Kate's book. <laughs> I'm going to measure them perfectly to fit my foot. They're, you know, wool and mohair, very strong, very warm. They'll right. be perfect for wearing oh, on the farm. Beautiful. Yeah. All summer, we'll wear wool socks all summer long. Yeah. Because they're really good for sweating and uh, keep your feet comfortable in rubber right. boots, even when it's really hot outside. So I, um, I have to make a comment about the small needle size and knitting with a very thin yarn. So I'm most often knitting with something that's at least DK or thicker weight yarns and uh, other than shawls which are lighter but you're using bigger needles so it goes the way that uh, lace knitting goes but I was like I did a little bit of a um, when we were preparing the kits for the smitten with mittens cow I uh, I did cheated. a swatch <laughs> I, swore, I did a little swatch and I have to say I had to go down a needle size to get the gauge which we'll talk about more later when it comes time to do that but um, it knits up, it's almost like it knits up faster. The small. It's you, very easy on your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Stretchier. I think so. Right. So if you're like me, kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to go through the trouble or the, what I thought was going to be kind of tediousness of knitting with a fine gauge yarn and tiny, tiny needles, I would say don't worry about that either. Because yeah. Because it, it's really, uh, it, re it goes faster. So the yeah. st stitches are tinier, but the knitting actually progresses. And I, I almost think it goes faster than my, my thicker stuff. It, well, it feels like the it. Fabric. I mean, yeah. these are, it's just the give and take of the elasticity in a thinner yarn is a little bit more rhythmic, I think, yeah. than in some of the thicker ones. Like yeah. I was really struggling with my Aaron White cable sweater, as you know. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of force required to manipulate when that yarn. Especially if you're doing different stitch patterns. Yeah, and, and it's stuff. actually, if anyone else rides out there, it's very like having a horse on the bit with the give and take of your elbow. Yeah. So you get, the energy just moves back and forth through your hands and right. the yarn acts in a very similar way, I right. find, to thinner right. yarn. Yeah. So maybe so. you actually just feel more comfortable knitting longer. Yeah, and I don't know. Smoother. You have to you test it, but it's very yeah. pleasant. Yeah, it is very it's pleasant. It's not tedious at all. Yeah. It's very rhythmic. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll know we ran out of the chag <laughs> nine inch. I'm doing magic loop. Uh, your so favorite. So our order should be coming in by the time this is yes. airing, and so we'll have all the little socks. They'll probably show up in the middle of the filming of Most this Most likely, because <laughs> that's our luck. Yes. Hi, UPS guy. Yeah. Um, our good friend. We'll call out. Justin, Justin's yeah. his name. I, I'm very sad that I had to do them in Magic Loop, but it's still still pretty pleasant. Yeah. So that's the socks. And then we had a giveaway for this pattern. Right. So we random number generator selected two people from the Ravelry um, thread, which is how we're managing our contest now, because it's really easy to tell who the voices are that have entered. Mm -hmm. And the winners are, I think, S, Mammy, Joe, and K, Barsuli. I'm not Our sure if the G is oh, silent okay. or not. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> you can see it down below. Yeah. So congratulations, and you'll yeah. get to knit the socks, and we'll send you the coupon code to get the pattern right. off of Kate's Ravelry store. Great. Should I keep just keep on the sock thing? Because... Uh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll just yeah. change it up a bit. Why not? Yeah. Sure. So we're on socks. So I couldn't resist doing a couple 
well, the rest of the colors I had planned for right. our new So section. I just want to stop you for one second because you guys, if you watched episode four, you may have noticed that I don't play poker because everything shows on my face. And when Jennifer <laughs> said, that's it for the colors for now, I went like Well, that, that was for now. That was two weeks ago. <laughs> Right. It was like two weeks ago. So how many new colors are there? They're not new. All right. They were... Mm -hmm. They. I've wanted to do this neon rainbow for a really long time, and I couldn't figure out, like, you're not really going to do it in an Aaron weight necessarily. No. So I've had these colors kind of set aside until we had just the right yarn that I got to use them all. So we did launch three of them with the sock yarn launch, and then I just thought I might as well do up the other three, um, you know, because... <laughs> Well, I'll, <laughs> okay, on, because I couldn't help myself. Okay, yeah. fine. All right. <sighs> okay, so these are um, the other three colors, and I love them. <laughs> so I really wasn't sure about the brights idea. I was a bit nervous about it because not everybody likes, you know, bold, beautiful, crazy color as much as I do. And I had planned to do sort of like a fall fair um, theme with them because we have something here on Prince Edward Island every August, August. called yeah. Old Home Week, which is basically our fall harvest fair kind of thing, which right. a lot of rural communities have, yeah. uh, or cities for that matter. But it's a tradition that's been going on in Canada for a long time. So every fall you have a celebration, there might be a horse show, everybody shows their sheep, yeah. um, you display all the agricultural goods in the pumpkin contests and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been to several all across Canada over the course of our lives, and it's yeah. a really fun thing. So you'll note that's sort of what the colors are named after. So this one is Cherry Slush, because of course you can get slushies. Right. And this is Caramel Apple. It's obviously the color of the apple underneath. Oh, okay. Caramel <laughs> apples are always green apples, <laughs> and the candy apples are red ones. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Geez. Okay. I've been eating those all my life and never really put two and two yeah, together. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I know. She really looked at me strangely when I said this was called caramel apple. Right. Good thing I'm explaining it. Okay. So that's those two. And then this one is called Midway because, of course, in at least in modern times anyway, it's always included um, a Midway with rides and things. Right. And this is sort of reflective right. of the orange lights. So a lot of people bought our sock yarn. It's gone to the all four corners of the earth yeah, since last episode, great. which yeah. is amazing. I think New Zealand was the farthest, yeah. which is literally right underneath us on the other side of the planet pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Um, hi, Emma. <laughs> so uh, it was, it's very exciting. And I yeah. think they, a lot of people commented that the colors all like look really good together and mm -hmm. you can use them in color work. And certainly I can think of some tin can knits patterns right off the bat that would be amazing with some of this, these right. colors in their yoke and things. So it's really right. fun. Yeah. So that's it. So I'm going to, I, I think that this is a little um, insert about Old Home Week, which is the agricultural right. fair, is that in PEI, um, it's uh, centered around a big um, standard bread race. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Horse race called the Gold Cup and Saucer because the, the prize you know, like the Stanley Cup in hockey <laughs> and other, the, the Grey Cup and right. that kind of thing. The Gold Cup and Saucer is the uh, the grand prize. And it's actually um, so ingrained in the culture here on PEI that the Gold Cup and Saucer, there's a big parade to celebrate before the, the big race. And it's actually, that's our holiday. So there's um, natal day holidays in other parts of the country that um, are usually in August. So we do not take a natal day instead you have gold cup and saucer uh, day yeah. which is a holiday so and the parade for you know a relatively small place the parade is huge it goes yeah. on for a long long time so uh it's a long a long route with lots and lots of uh uh floats and you know people marching in the parade bands and things like that and the uh the amount of people that come out to see it it's really it's really amazing it's super fun I play the bagpipe, so yeah. I'm always She's in the very parade. familiar with how long the route is. Yes, yes. <laughs> Having marched it in a kilt. Right. This in, year's in August. August. Yeah. In August, yeah. yes. So uh, anyway, it's a great, uh, a great thing. So if you're if you're on the island during that time, it's a must. It's a must do actually. Yeah. So. You know what I think would work for that if you got those icebreakers wool underwear. Right. Because I think that would be. It's the, not the wool the that's the problem. It's probably no. whatever you have on underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we'll try that this year. Right. <laughs> we'll get some icebreakers 
make merino underwear, and apparently they're fantastic, and we've yeah. long wanted to try all of their, their stuff, yeah. but I so. think that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're in Calgary, it would be like Stampede Parade Day in Calgary. It's kind of like a holiday. I mean, <laughs> okay, not on the scope <laughs> of that, but it is sort of like an unofficial day off of yes. celebration in that yeah. community. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah. everybody comes out for it. It's really yeah. like it's a pretty good parade, I yeah. have to say. We've, yeah. we've got some smaller ones here yeah. that maybe aren't as exciting, but because yeah. we don't have the population base to really, right. but they really do roll out the red carpet for that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. It's cool. Old Home Week is, is fun and it's always something you look forward to, but that it's also kind of indicate the end yeah. of the summer for most people because the kids are getting close to going back to school. So yeah. it's kind of a double well, not as Not as fallish as other agricultural fairs no. that really take place Even in like later. September and October. Yeah. So it's at least you do have a little bit. But it actually is a call to action. If you haven't been to the beach, you better get there. Yes. <laughs> You're running out of time. Yeah. You're running out of time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm still working on my water shawl. So I did a couple things uh, in the last two weeks. So I didn't, um, I didn't get as far. On it. Do I say that every week? I didn't get as far as I expected. So, but I am working through it. I am about to start the uh, the third panel of lace. So that's ha the halfway point. Um, I did have to rip back because I got off track somehow, and um, I uh, I wasn't happy with the way it looked. I could have fudged it and probably nobody except for me would have noticed, but it's we just, never fudge it. We never, we don't like to do that. So I ripped back and you know what? I talked about the fact, and you talked about this fact with your lace straw by um, Sylvia McFadden as well, is that the, the garter panels are, make it really fun because you have a little bit of a rest. And I can tell you that for ripping back, they're very useful as well because you can just go through that lace panel um, I didn't have to do a lifeline or anything. I just uh, went back to the, the last row of the, um, the garter and was able to pick up where I left off. And so I'm hoping, um, I'm actually really excited to have this finished because I really think I like it. <laughs> I think I like it. I know I like it. So, uh, I've been doing so many other things that, uh, I, I've, Kind of not been working as quickly yeah. on this we as were I making, would actually like. We were making mitten kits, let's face it. Yes, <laughs> yes, and swatching yeah, mitten kits. Yeah, and we were, yeah, it was a busy couple of weeks after last yeah. So, yeah. So not much to say uh, about this, but you did take a really good picture of it. So yeah. we'll put the picture up and you'll be able to see a little bit closer the the waves and the water. Yeah. Um, so that's all that I have to say about that. Okay. Now I can actually, it's the first time that I can hardly wait for somebody else to talk about their whip. I have. Oh. Oh, say, but oh, really? I can really hardly wait for you to talk about this. Okay. Okay, good. So let's put this aside. Okay. Okay. So the Ramia sweater, which I pronounced correctly half the times I said it last episode. <laughs> I had a big coaching session on how to say it correctly. It's Ramia. Okay. So I have actually I'm gonna take off my uh my waiting for rain just so that I can show my sleeve properly. So I mentioned Last time I hadn't even started this. We were just talking about the colors. Oh, okay. Yeah. You nope. don't even have the. And I had nothing. Thing. Okay. Yeah. So you, uh, the construction of this is like if you're a person who thinks I don't want to knit a sweater because I'll get bored. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's amazing. It's a thrill a minute. It's like the Dose Kiss ad. It's the world's most interesting knitting pattern. <laughs> you know the, the world's most interesting yeah. man. Anyway, so you start off with this color work band which you knit in the round right then you cut it because it's a steak so I reinforced it with the sewing machine because this is a very fine uh, slippery <laughs> yarn it's actually a, the least sticky of any of our yarns that mm. I've ever worked with so the the 30% mohair is clearly adding a little something to it because I might have cheated a little bit and I tried cutting it before I reinforced it. And whoo, there was a few emergency maneuvers needed to take place to get yes. it all back on track. I think extra applications of deodorant were Yeah, required. so whoa, <laughs> it's not sticky. <laughs> so then you, you, you break the, or you cut the stick and then you have this straight flat band and then you start knitting in one direction. You and do a provisional cast on. Yeah, right? it's yeah. cast on, the color work is cast on provisionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so then you, you knit in one direction and then you pick up and you knit in the other direction and it's actually grafted together right here. So I'm, I've pretty well got my Kitchener stitch 
skills down, even though you used to often be able to hear me screaming through the household right. that Kitchener Stitch was ruining my life. Right. <laughs> Every time I saw it, I got sweaty palms. But there's a really good uh, little image that you can find on Google, and I forget which knitting um, person put it out. Uh, anyway, and it's called the Zen of the Kitchener Stitch, yeah. and that's my go-to to get me through Kitchener Stitch until I remember how to make it again, because I've learned it like eight times. But it's, you can see it's quite smooth, and when I block this, it'll actually be invisible. So then you graft it together. Then you attach the sleeve to the body. Um, well, oh, sorry, then you knit this band, and then you attach them together using a series of short rows going up the raglan join here. So I actually have a right sleeve. <laughs> oh, <laughs> minus an eyeball. Okay, uh, the the short rows, and then now I'm knitting like this. It's amazing. Across the body, and I'm just under halfway through. The neck shaping is done using German short rows. So I did. You're increasing, then you're decreasing slightly to make neck neck shaping and right now I'm just knitting exactly straight for a little bit and then I'll start doing the reverse it's amazing up the other side love it yeah haven't been bored for a second it seems like it's gonna fit perfectly and this this stripe is also done in the round in the steep. yeah same, same thing same like thing. I steeped it I sewed it first that time yeah that's good <sighs> I love I like living on the edge right so and of course when this blocks it'll look flat yeah mm -hmm. like a lovely and it makes like a really nice edge, like the salvage edge on the bottom is yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I think there's an I-cord going on oh, here. Oh, yeah, okay. but I don't want to say any more about the construction because, again, I didn't read ahead. Okay. Um, although she does give an overview. The pattern's excellently written. Like, this, Jennifer's just done such an amazing job with this pattern because it, it really is... There would be a lot of room to really get people headed in the wrong direction with this, but it's been really easy to follow yeah. and I'm enjoying it. And nobody took me up on my offer to knit it with me, but it's not too late. Yeah. It's yeah. really gorgeous. And I, I'm, really I'm not excited. even knitting it and I'm asking her, how's it, how, yeah. how's it going? What's, yeah. And the lace is very easy. Mm -hmm. Memorize it like that. Nothing to it. Just go back and forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's me saying that, and I can't remember anything these days. And there's an eye cord, I think, oh, that goes okay. around the cuff as well. I think the neck is probably finished just okay. like this, but I honestly can't remember. It's gorgeous. Anything. Yeah. So that leads me into a little bit about steaking, because it's one of my favorite things. And uh, I'm just going to show a couple other projects that I've used it on where it actually wasn't even recommended. And if you haven't cut your knitting, you're really missing out. I haven't. I haven't done it yet. It's so fun. Oh, I love it. And it's really good if you have a sewing machine. It's very, very easy to reinforce it because you can crochet a reinforcement right. along as well. I'm and not I've sure done why it both ways. I haven't done it. It doesn't it just scare me, really. It's just no, that I think I just it scares never... some people. I don't yeah. know why. It's the most yeah. fun thing ever. And honestly, this yarn's a bit slippery, but for the most part, any of our yarns, yeah. they're really forgiving when you're sticking. So I'll just quickly show a couple other applications. This is a pattern that calls for it, and of course, the reason that uh, it's designed that way is so that you don't have to purl in your color right. work, so it makes sense right. to do at yes. least that part of yeah. the round, right? So that was the reason for that. So I did this Snow Skies Cardigan by Ash Alberg um, quite a while ago now, and this is in the x Help colorway, which was a special edition we did with Hannah Lisa Hafferkamp, actually, who makes the project bags I showed earlier. So I think she's the only one who has it uh, anymore. But this was meant to be knit flat. And instead, I just cast on the number of stitches in the round, added the steek mm -hmm. uh, stitches going down the middle. I knit the whole thing in the round, never having to purl, even though that pattern required knitting back and forth. Right. And then I just cut it up here. Yeah. And I reinforced it with crochet in this case. So it makes a bit of a thicker reinforcement, and you can find tutorials on how to do this. That online. helps to stabilize the pattern too, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's pretty good because there is a button band and yeah. things, so you it doesn't. You apply the button and band after. Yes, and the collar goes. Yeah, like so the... then I picked up along yeah. where it was reinforced, and it's just, and this isn't even finished. Like the the yarn just stays. Yeah. There's nothing holding that other than the wooliness of this wonderful 100% wool. Yeah. Uh, Woolen spun because this was in the McCoslin's formula. Yeah. Um, Yarn. So that was one place where I just thought, I'm not going to knit that flat. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> no to that. Yeah. And so then there is the sort of infamous poncho from hell. <laughs> 
And it was really called that. It took me probably three years to get to the end of the, I think since I started knitting. It was a long term. It's called commitment. the Oakwood Poncho. It came yeah. free in my inbox from Knit Picks one day. And I was like, that's cute. I can knit that. It's just sort of straight. It actually had brioche. I had no idea what I was getting into. And I didn't swatch. That and was it, your first time doing brioche? Yes. Yeah. And I know how to pick out and redo brioche really well now. Yeah. Seems every, intimidating, every but it, day. you'd be amazed how you can pick it out and redo it. Uh, anyway, as the sizes go up, there was a panel here to make it wider, which I did not need with my gauge. Right. And I had already put so much work into it, and I was so determined to finish it because I don't like leaving projects half finished. And so I just took the scissors to it. Once again, I reinforced with a line of crochet, and I cut off the excess width um, that I had added. My row gauge was probably fine, but my stitch gauge was way off. Yeah. So I just literally cut off a piece of fabric this wide off yeah. both sides. And, and it's, you know, it's kind of like a steak. I yeah. cut it. It wasn't technically joined in the round or anything, but, mm. uh, and then I just, you know, tacked it down and it stayed perfectly. And it makes a wonderful kind of like a snuggy kind of thing for yeah. on the, on Very the couch. Very comfortable. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind of like a wool blanket that goes right. over my shoulders now. Right. So if you have projects that you think you might be able to fix by cutting them, just like you would cut a fabric. Yeah. Then do it. You can add length to, well, in fact, in that case, you don't need to, you don't need to do a steak, but there's all kinds of things you can do. Yeah. And okay. the only thing that stopped me from making it shorter was it would have ruined my intarsia. Right. pattern or I would have tried to work something out about the length too. Right. Um, I ended up taking it up, in, up a bit at the back of the neck. So I also ran out of yarn. So this is a different color, but I don't care. Yeah. I finished it. That's right. And after all that, even though it wasn't perfect, I still went to the trouble of putting all the fringe on just so yeah. that, you know, I finished yeah. it because he, everybody has projects laying around that well, it's wasted effort and it's worth putting in a little bit more effort to turn it into something you'll right. actually use. And you, I mean, I don't think you, you uh, made this pattern for the comfort and the, yeah. like, have something to put around your shoulders anyway. Yeah. So who cares if the, the hand dyed yarn is a little bit different or. Yeah. I mean, it's, really... it's, it's a bit of a mess, but I love it. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, the main it thing. It suits the purpose. Yeah. And Which is actually much better than having something that's beautiful, but for some reason you don't wear. Yeah, because there's something wrong with it and you don't fix it, but yet you don't wear it. Kind yeah. of like my stag sweater. That yeah. And out by the campfire, like, yeah. And it was fun to do the brioche collar. It's kind of like a good way to get a little intro into into brioche. And these 100% wool yarns are excellent for brioche. Right. Like, I'm sure you can see the definition on that. And then it pops. when inevitably you make a mistake, uh, it makes it really easy to learn how to unpick and redo and pick up your, your brooch stitches mm -hmm. again because everything will literally stay there like it's held with Velcro. Right. And you can really fiddle around with it and, yeah. and learn a lot yeah. about how to fix brioche, which intimidates a lot of people too because yeah. they're like, if you make a mistake, you have to start right back in the beginning. <laughs> you yeah. Can't, you can't pick it up, but you absolutely can. And I was a very new knitter when I did this. Yes. As you can tell by the number of faux pas I made. <laughs> yes. Yeah, All so learning opportunity. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tiring just talking about it. Okay, <laughs> so where, where were we? That was my whip with steaking yep. and some chats about steaking. Right. Yeah, so, so give it a that's try. It. That's it. Yeah, and if you think you have something you can fix with steaking, go for it. Right. It's better than having it sit in the drawer. Yeah, or even just cutting your knitting and picking up the stitches and re knitting parts of it. There's all it's kinds like, of things you can do. All kinds of things. Right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, then that just leaves the new pattern. Okay. So this is my FO really, but we had to rearrange the order a little bit so right. that we could talk about things. So I actually... And I have a whip. You have a whip that's related to the pattern. Yes. Yeah. So I actually designed a hat. Yes. And it's called Perhaps Love. <laughs> so if you see it, it's not a misspelling. So I was listening to a show that we have here called Weekend Morning. Yeah. And they played Perhaps Love, which right. is a John Denver song, but there's a recording of him singing it with Placido Domingo, which I just love. Right. And then I started to think about Valentine's Day, which traditionally has not been one of our favorite days. Are you going to tell your story? Oh, yeah. We were not popular <laughs> with dating. Like, we really weren't, right? I mean, you still got married fairly young, but let's face it, high school was torture. <laughs> <laughs> well, partly because I was best friends with the most popular girl in high school. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure what my problem was. Yeah. But anyway. So it was even more torturous because her and I hung out all the time and I ended up 
driving home by oh. myself a lot of nights. Sounds delightful. <laughs> and like I have friends who have gotten, you know, dumped on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And so in our in my twenties, two friends and I decided we are taking this Valentine's Day BS by the horns. Mm -hmm. The three of us are gonna go out to dinner. We're gonna be each other's Valentine's, we're gonna be each other's dates, we're not gonna worry about the traditional Valentine's Day hoopla. We're just gonna go to a nice three good dinner. friends. Yeah. So we didn't make a reservation. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> we showed up at like it was, but it was like a pubby kind of place we were going to. It wasn't fancy or anything. We showed up and they kind of the hostess greeted us at the door. Hi. And three we were like, girls? three. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, a table for three. And she was like, huh? <laughs> so we peeked through the door, and every single table in the place had been set up as a deuce, yeah. as they say in the restaurant industry. <laughs> like, literally, they had taken apart everything and just made it for couples. Even And so she, they were like, uh, oh my god, okay, take away one of the couples tables. We got three singles here. And we were like, oh my god. And so they start rearranging things and they're like, okay, so you can come in, but can you be gone by 7.30? Because we have couples who want to eat. For Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah, and so I was like, okay. So we sit down. We, we, the bartender was over there laughing himself silly at all this going on. So he actually sent us over some drinks. Oh, he which felt bad for he you. He felt sorry for us. Because it was completely have humiliating. We threw off their whole couples only schedule. <laughs> and uh, I finished the first drink and then I went to go to the bathroom and I tripped over the edge of the dance floor and went sprawling out onto the floor, <laughs> which made him laugh even harder. Send and her then, another drink. Yeah, right. <laughs> and finally we just left in shame. <laughs> wow. By 7.30. But you know what? It's amazing how things have changed since then. I think, I hope so. Because when I don't that, know. that would have been in the 90s. I don't know. For sure. Yeah. Anyways. Or so even early 2000s. I just I don't, don't want to give the impression that we like Valentine's Day or a lot of the stuff that goes along with it. However, we do believe in love. Right. Uh, for friends and every, for, well, for everybody really. Right. And so that's the intention with which I designed the, I don't know if it'll fit over my bun, the perhaps yeah. love hat. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, you need to shift it that way a, a little, little bit. bit. I want yeah. my hearts lined up. Yeah. Here, do you want me to do it for you? Yeah, it's the bun. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's, that's really going to be ruined. Okay. okay. So anyway, so I wanted to do something that was sort of, you know, had a love theme, right? But wasn't too crazy. So I did these. Uh, this is out of the Japanese stitch book. So they're seed stitch heart cables. Yeah. They're beautiful. And I did it in I think five sizes. Mm -hmm. And so it goes all the way from cute, adorable little newborn yeah. to adult large. And right. it's been testnitted thoroughly in I'm, every size. I'm testnitting the adult large. Yeah. And uh, we have all these lovely colors that I chose for our nice photo shoot. And this is quartz. Rosy Cheeks Rhubarb Natural, and Kim's doing it in Seagull. Yep. And uh, I've used the Craft Council sizing guidelines and everything, so you can knit it for everybody. Right. And so we're really hoping that people will love the pattern and knit it for somebody that they care about. Yeah. And if you must knit it for yourself, which I did, knit a matching set so that you can give one to somebody yeah. uh, instead of a traditional Valentine. So that's the perhaps love. And it's one skein of our yes. yarn. I'm doing the large because we're just making sure that it's one skein. Yeah. So stay tuned. We'll tell you for sure. Yeah, no, for sure one. it will be. I didn't yeah. use hardly anything on mine. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to do a little kit. So basically, with if you buy any of these colors, uh, you'll get the pattern for a dollar. Right. Yeah. So we'll put those up under the kit section of our website. And then hopefully you can knit a perhaps love. I have to say, for somebody. I love the seed stitch in the middle of the It's heart. really cute. Yes. Yeah. And I would be knitting I it. Especially like, I, you always seem like when you're doing one of these vlogs or whatever that you should be knitting while you're doing it. I can't knit. And no. I have to look at my knitting. But yeah. since I made a huge big mistake in my knitting this morning when I woke up <laughs> at six o'clock and was furiously, I don't know what I was thinking that I was actually going to get it done, but right. no. Anyway, so now I can't knit because I have to back out the last row I did. Oh, you're really stuck now. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. stuck. Anyway, so that's a fun little pattern I did, and I don't get to design patterns very often because we're too busy, but usually around Christmas holiday time, I can crank out a couple, and then we have Jennifer Hicks. Our friend Jennifer Hicks yeah. does a lot of knitting for us. Yeah. She knit these. 
and many more testing yeah. it. And uh, we had some other she's lovely. Fast, eh? She's fast, Yeah, I yeah. think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's probably thinking, yeah, right. I'm making it seem fast so that you don't feel bad. I've been up all night for four nights. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And she's got a really uh, cool trick for blocking them, too. Yes, what was that? Yeah, so she, uh, blocking oh, yeah. hats is always a bit of a challenge. We blow up a balloon and right. we tried bowls <laughs> and we tried all kinds of things. But because this has a little bit of a, like a, I don't know what you call it. It's a square it's bucket It's a bucket shape. shape. Yeah. yeah. So she actually rolled up bath towels and then made it round and put the bath towels up inside in, inside so that there was a tighter, a smaller one on top and then a little bit bigger to block it that way and it worked perfectly. So yeah. she did a wonderful job and yeah. I've made it in every size imaginable yeah. um, so that no matter who your Valentine is, yeah. they can have the perhaps love hat. Yeah. So yes. that's that. It's yeah. Beautiful. So I hope some people will knit it with us. Yeah. Yeah. These are all going back to Jennifer. Hopefully her family's not watching because they're probably all getting one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. So now the next thing is a segment of Welcome to Our World. Yes. So Ken is still at it. Oh, he's, he's a, a busy guy. <laughs> he's a busy guy. Yeah. So we're just going to uh, take a little break and check what Ken is up to. And then we'll be back after that. Cool. So picking the fleece is opening it up by putting it on this belt and it goes through a drum which breaks it up open and then it's blown into this little room where we condition it and after it's conditioned it's dried and taken out onto the dehair if necessary. Not all fleeces need dehairing. It's basically just to remove coarse fibers that you don't want going in the yarn and once it's been through these drums it comes out the other end very open very fluffy cleaner and less coarse overall because the heavy hairs actually fall through the drums down into a catch basin below the machine and then we're ready to card all right so we're back and we have two guests with us this is Paige and mabel and mabel so these are our Angora bunnies. And we actually have uh, nine Angora bunnies, including these two beautiful girls. Yeah. So we, um, we use them, uh, we comb them. So uh, I th we, most of the fiber that we've gathered from them has been combed. In the summer, um, we don't necessarily need to clip them here, but when it gets super hot, like it did last summer, then we did, um, we did clip them as well. So, but their hair grows really, really quickly yeah so um Paige anybody that visits our shop Paige <laughs> actually lives in the shop not with the rest of the bunnies because Paige does not get along well with others usually mm -hmm. so there's uh we're learning we're learning we've had them about a year and a half almost a year and yeah. a half and uh, we're learning lots about bunnies and they're not as nice as you think. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they'll they fight each other. Yeah. They're, they're nice they, to people. Yeah, they're yeah. Not, except for the one that bit me. Right, okay. We're not going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're, um, they seem like they'd be so innocent and soft, yeah. and went, but they actually can get in fights. And yeah. The way we have them um, housed is, I don't know, we're not really big fans of small cages or cages or whatever. No. So they have quite a large area, lots of space actually with different levels and yeah. everything where they where they live. Their cabin. Their cabin, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we came out one day and Paige looked a little roughed up, but we thought, well, okay, there's, you know, she's got a little scratch there. I don't know, she, maybe she scratched herself or something. And uh, we never thought any more of it. We never dreamed in a million years they'd be doing you know what is it MMA? Yeah, <laughs> mixed MMA martial arts, arts. <laughs> yeah. in the in the rabbit hutch, and uh, so. But the next day we came out and she was really like beaten up. Yeah. So not she wasn't like she was hurt. She was just a lot of scratches and yeah. stuff. So we had lacerations. To take, <laughs> lacerations. So we had to take um, take her to the vet, and which is not easy. I have to say, not there's not a lot of vets that um, know a lot about rabbits, and they're kind of particular. We'll talk about a few facts about them. Yeah, they would be of. considered an exotic breed for yes. vet practice. Yeah. Yes. So we took her to the vet. They cleaned her all up. There was no injuries, serious injuries. She just had to heal. So we actually have quite a large rabbit cage. 
So we put the cage in the hutch so that she could stay with her friends, but they wouldn't be able to, to fight. Friends. <laughs> yeah, her friends. <laughs> so they wouldn't be able to fight. And after about, I don't know, four or five days, she was all healed up. So then we said, well, maybe... Um, because they had lived there for nine months and there had been no problem. Mm -hmm. So we let her out of the cage and we came back the next morning and OMG, we had a fit. Her eye was actually, um, was actually cut her eyelid like down like that. So she'd gotten into another fight and we were horrified because it really looked very bad. Well, so we felt bad for putting her back in. Yeah. But we didn't know if she had got caught on something initially yeah. or if it was really fighting or. Yeah. So anyway, we called desperately. We have a, a good vet that knows quite a lot about rabbits, but she wasn't working that day that that happened. So we, uh, there's a veterinary college close by to where we live. So we um, called there and we took her right away. And it just so happened that there was a, a ophthalmology specialist at visiting the vet college that day. And, um, you know, it looked pretty serious, so we were having discussions about, okay, well, how much do you think it's going to cost, and how much can we, you know, at what point is it, do we have a tough decision to make? Right. Anyway, the numbers we were, we were, it turns out that her eye was not injured, and her tear ducts were not injured. It was really just a cut, but the cost of trying to have it fixed was going to be, um, it was not in, even in the realm of what we were discussing <laughs> yeah. about making decisions. No. So it was like th in the thousands by the time yes. they would have got her released. Right. Yeah. And then they couldn't even, they say they don't really do very well under anesthetic. And anyway, so Jennifer packed her back up into the car, texted me or phoned me on my phone and said, get ready. We're doing gorilla, <laughs> gorilla first aid on this rabbit because it's just not an option for, for surgery. Uh, the surgery, plastic surgery, <laughs> plastic surgery. So anyway, that's what we did. And literally $9 worth of steri strips <laughs> yeah. and Dermagel, which is a, a like a healing, like agent. A healing yeah. agent that yeah. we use. And, Paige was a real trooper. She allowed us to work around her eye and everything. And um, honestly, you can't even tell that she had had no. like a serious injury. It, it basically went back together. And so now we don't take any chances. So she lives She lives with us in yeah. the mill and is often the star of the show. Yeah. She's, is she's trained for a little box. Yep. Mostly. So, mostly. <laughs> she does leave to like leave us little presents, but nothing too no too bad. But she's trained. She just likes to freestyle it a little bit sometimes. Yeah. 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 So she'll be hopping around in here. So if you come to our shop and you see hay, that's Paige's fault. Yeah. So. So uh, and we love having the bunnies, and they actually these are English Angora, and they need to be brushed almost daily. Yeah. So we really, of course, we had no idea what we were getting into. Right. Uh, and it took us a while to kind of get the rhythm of things. So we generally bring a bunny up to the store with us every day besides Paige. And right. we'll brush one a day just to keep everybody um, fairly tidied up. And there are bunny aficionados that know a lot more about bunnies than we do. We're just still learning. But yeah. um, there, we do spin their fiber. Yeah. It's I've read once it's seven times warmer than wool, I guess yeah. by weight, by its yeah. weight. Would that I don't be? know. I never know when they say seven times by what gauge, but, yeah. um, and they actually eat Timothy hay as their primary food. So it's yeah. not lettuce and carrots. If you feed them lettuce and carrots, you've got a bunny with the runs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not so, a running bunny. No. <laughs> yeah, we were surprised because our vet, uh, told us, she said, you have to think about them, um, more like you would feed horses. Yeah. Yeah, so, and they need the fiber. Um, yeah. I'm understanding to help any any hair that they die like that they ingest because they grow um, themselves. So the fiber yeah. in the hay helps the the hair move through their digestive tract. Otherwise, they can get blocked with it and get something called wool block. But we brush them so often, um, yeah. they probably don't don't remove as much hair themselves. There's just yeah. you know we're removing it for them to try to prevent um, or minimize the chances of that too. Yeah. And poor little Mabel here also has a dramatic story. So one day it we sounds went like into we're the, terrible bunny mothers. No, but we, we, we one day we went into the bunny cabin and there were only eight bunnies. Yeah. And Mabel is kind of we don't play favorites, of course, no. but. She's, she's beautiful. Yeah, she's really sweet. We had her since she was a baby. So um, Mabel was missing. Yeah. And the investigation began. Yeah. We were looking for any sign of what might have taken her. And we do have predators here. We have coyotes and foxes and raccoons and any number of them. And, and eagles. 
But the hutch is built like at Fort Knox. As yes, far as anything we, like yeah, that. really that wire nice. under the floor. It's completely encased in uh, in wire. Yeah, and uh, so we could not figure out. And there were no signs of like hair scraping through small holes. And we knew the bunnies were fairly like chubby. Like they're not they're not tiny. It's not like a mouse. Yeah. They can't fit through a quarter size so hole. We couldn't yeah. figure out where the bunny went. Yeah. So for two days, we were desperate. Where yeah. is Mabel? Did someone steal her? Because someone stole someone's ducks here on the island the other week. Oh. It's crazy. So yeah. we didn't know. And uh, anyway, and then I don't know you tell what. So then I just. So the inside of the, the inside of the hutch is all done with pine paneling. That was left, <laughs> left no, over just from. Just like our uh, store. Yeah. Just, it was left over from our store. And um, we did that up high, like higher than us, like yeah. higher than we could stand. And there's like little studs in behind it, which it, which are, I don't know what, four, is it four inch studs? I guess Something maybe, like, that, yeah. like small. So does she look like she's four inches wide? <laughs> no. So anyway, it's pretty high and we're, um, you know, and they hop like rabbits hop, but they don't really jump high yes, or we've levitate. Never, we've never seen them do yeah, that. So yeah. the only explanation we had was, we don't know. She stuck, we tore the shed apart in case, cause the door is on a, um, we have the door on a spring, so it closes right. automatically that she must've slipped out be, right. or aliens took her. Yeah, that, that was, was, <laughs> it was just there a was mystery. Just no trace of her whatsoever. No sign of foul play. So or Jen, forced entry. No. <laughs> and the other buddies weren't saying anything. No. So anyway, Jennifer, um, there was always, we have a little thing in our household, but Jennifer is, uh, always has this. A sixth sense. Of a sorts. sixth sense of sorts. And so she, she woke up on day two because we were really, like we were heartbroken. I have yes. To say. Every morning we would be like, where is Mabel? Yes. So, um, Jennifer said, she's here somewhere so we were and her jennifer's husband steven who still doesn't have a sweater <laughs> that's fine <laughs> yeah so save the day really well because yeah. jennifer said she's got to be here somewhere where could she be so the only um the only place left to look was between the walls but there were no holes anywhere where something had chewed through them because it's really thick paneling and there was this impossibly high, the, the paneling didn't go all the way up to the ceiling, but it's, it was impossibly high where there was a yeah. gap, a small gap between the studs and the, and the thing. So, so it's almost impossible, but if we don't look everywhere, we'll, be, we'll, we'll always be wondering what happened. So Stephen had to go get the ladder. He had to climb up the ladder, and he looked over with the flashlight. Rolling his eyes the entire time, because he did not believe me for a second that she might be in the wall. Right. And he said, oh my God, she's there, and she's still alive. And we were, I, you cannot believe, we were jumping up and down, and we were like... And oh. then I, the panic always sets in. You know, it's like uh -huh. when, it's, when you're closest to rescuing or saving yeah. them, you're like, oh yeah. my gosh, you know, now it's urgent. It's been yeah. two days, but she might die in the next 10 seconds. Yeah. So yeah. Stephen actually got a crowbar and started ripping the wall apart and um there she was she there was. she was there and yeah. we let her out we thought for sure like she'd be desperate for food and water but she just she just casually hopped out, hopped out after, you know the yeah. place was torn apart not even phased at all and, and they do have little noises and things they can make they have yeah. quite a few different vocalizations she never said a word right and we called to her every yeah. day. Like, we were obsessed with trying to yeah. find her. Anyway, and then it was really funny. We loved this. Then, <laughs> then we don't anthropomorphize too much. Oh, a little bit, okay. but not that much. But anyway, Jennifer likes to sometimes give them voices. Yeah. And uh, I said, Mabel, how come you didn't tell us where you were? And Jennifer said, in the voice of Mabel, Yeah, I'm just a bunny. What could I do? <laughs> <laughs> T-shirt freedom. You could have done a lot. Yeah, because they can be pretty loud. Yeah, but they're so strange. bred to be so docile, and she, she just, just gave up. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we were so happy. I don't think. We well, we've been happy lots of times, right. but we were really happy. Yeah, to find we couldn't imagine what had happened to her. And it had been a couple, like a couple days. Yeah. So you know, 
two no two food days. and water and yeah. things you start to get very panicky yeah, but, but she she just came out or she was fine. yeah anyway so it's been kind of a joy having them but they are a lot of work yes. a lot of brushing and in fact in the summer we had volunteers come by helping us with the brushing it's that much work when yeah. you have nine of them probably two would have been sufficient yeah uh, and they do come in many different colors and mabel's hair was actually used in the hearth the original hearth stool that ash designed we made a lovely gray heathered kind of yarn yeah. And so we thought, as something fun, we've got a lot of bunny wool harvested now from right. combing. And, of course, very ethically and traceably sourced. It's right. coming right from our own little hands here. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to spin up a really special yarn um, just to share with you guys. And I've been spending hours on Ravel Research, which is one of the reasons I probably don't have an FO, looking for the perfect projects. Um, to spin, you know, it's very, very bloomy, obviously, yeah. and, and fluffy and very warm. Yeah. Um, so I've picked a couple cute projects that we think will be perfect for the yarn we're planning, and we're going to have that for next episode to show you in a few nice spring colors, and hopefully you can join us. Um, and that's what we're going to do with this this season's batch of, of our Angora hair. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and it's really, it's really fun to spin and work with. And yeah. It dyes up nice, and it'll be, it'll be lovely. Yeah. So and we have uh, five gray ones as well. Yeah, the boys are the boys yeah. are all gray, and uh, we have another uh, another uh, white um, bunny yeah. Philip Philip yeah, and another they buff one names. which is Grace yeah. which is the mother of uh, of the babies babies yeah, yeah. Mabel's storing a snack for later oh a Timothy double. head okay. okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we hope you like the yarn. So it's most likely going to be a very light heathered thing that will over dye in some spring colors. Yeah. And I do have two perfect projects um, that we're going to spin sort of to spec that will work with the two lightweight, um, bloomy projects yeah. that are going to come up with for it. So that'll be really fun. So yeah. we should have that by next episode. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And that'll be going up for sale. And I think we're getting close to the end, but yeah. finally, it's cast on day for the Smitten with Mittens knit along. Yes. Knit along. Knit whatever. <laughs> and uh, we know lots of kits have gone out, which is amazing. Yeah. We added a new kit a couple days ago for another Trondheim. one of Pia's patterns called Tronheim, but yeah. by the time this airs, the discount code will actually have expired. But, oh, okay. Uh, it's good till January 31st. Oh, okay. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's not too late to join the Cal. You can knit any mittens whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Some people were saying that they don't already knit th those patterns oh, okay. but you can knit whatever mittens, mittens you want yeah. yeah and we don't care you know what yeah. the yardage is or whatever and yeah. so we'll be casting on our mittens yes um on today which is friday yeah. and uh, we'll be knitting along and there's no rush it goes till march 30th so we'll probably take our time so that we can remain sort of active in the group and, right. and go along with everybody so there's still lots of time to join uh, it certainly doesn't take two months to knit a pair of mittens no. And I uh, I picked Tron time because actually it has a little scene of the of the houses on yeah. it because it reminds me of lots of scenes around here yeah. actually as well so like Lunenburg or Peggy's Cove or, or, or lots of little towns even, in Newfoundland yeah yeah or even there's a little place here uh, Flat River that has little little uh, fishing shacks they're not houses things. but yeah. they're fishing shacks then painted all different colors yeah. and stuff so it's very um, the scene is can is very reminiscent. I guess it's probably like seaside, seaside yeah. communities and yeah. cities and stuff. So. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. So I think, oh, and the thumbs ups are really working. So thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> if, if we can get the thumbs ups on the videos, then more people, I don't think that's the proper plural thumbs ups. Thumbs up. I think there's more than one. the thumbs. Thumbs up thumbs up or yeah anyway thank you so much for everybody who keeps tuning in and we still are enjoying every single comment yeah and we have had a few technical issues so I should say I had never edited a video before our first episode <laughs> right uh, I have my I'm using my iPhone to film this as a matter of fact and I it's a farm phone so the what is on that phone would probably frighten most people. Like right. I take it into the barn, it's in the pocket of my coveralls. As it turns out, I dropped it and the lens is actually cracked in half. So we're right. doing well, but there is a spot right here. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry if anyone got up last week and tried to wipe it off Amanda's face. <laughs> Thinking it was on your TV. Yeah. Our mother did three times. Yeah. yeah. She told us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and lighting and everything. Like, there's a lot to this vlogging thing mm -hmm. um, to get everything right. So just bear with us and uh, hopefully the spot is not on one of our faces right, right now. Right. Uh, it tends to be in here with the yarn until somebody somebody moves. But eventually, yeah. hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get far enough along that yeah. we can buy some sort of more sophisticated equipment. But speaking of Amanda, 
Yeah. We should say. Oh, yes. A little update. Yeah. She is yeah. so humble because I tried to give her an opening last week to say that she's actually a, like a, a well known singer here. Yeah. And her and her band have just been nominated for uh, East Coast Music uh, Awards. East Coast yeah. Music Awards. So we're really excited for her because they've been working really hard. Yeah. They're great people, and we really hope uh, that they do well at the at the award ceremony for uh, for the East Coast Music Awards. Yes. Because they really deserve it. Yeah, and we've actually had them perform in our shop here yeah. several times. It's yeah. a real privilege to have um, a musical event here, just in our yeah. little yarn shop. And the yarn makes great acoustics. Yes. They've yes. told us. Yeah. Yeah, and it's. It's just such a cozy fun evening so yeah. if you're on the island and you haven't made it out for one of those shows you really need to they sell out yeah. very quickly of yeah. course because we can only fit 40 to 45 people in right. here um, and usually my husband who's a chef does a little spread out for everybody for yeah. during the break and it's so much fun so if you didn't if you weren't aware that we're doing that here occasionally watch um, our Facebook page is mm -hmm. usually where we create an event and we hope that they'll right. come back again soon but yeah, yeah. Um, nominated for an East Coast Music Awards. Yeah. And that's really exciting. Yeah. So thanks everybody for tuning in again and yeah. we'll see you next time. Yeah, and Paige and Mabel, Mabel say, say goodbye. goodbye. Bye. Yeah.